Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to be showing you 5 water-based weapon concepts that you can use to dominate your oceans. Now these redstone weapons all require various degrees of effort, some of them will take a little bit of your time and some of them are brain dead easy to build. This one definitely falls into the first category. This is the C4 TNT cannon. So what you do is you just find your enemy's base, in this case we'll just use this poor little island right here, and just set a bunch of soul sand on the seabed right here next to it. And we're going to set up this little thing, put a piece of TNT here, this is literally all it is, put a piece of redstone right here, and the TNT launches, does some damage. Now this little thing, you can actually reuse it over and over, so you can just put another piece of TNT, launch it off, reset it, put another piece of TNT, launch it off, you can just keep doing that over and over again. It's a pretty good weapon. Now this next weapon is pretty interesting because it's actually a trap, making use of the new Skulk Sensor block. So what we need to do to test it out is go ahead and get ourselves into a boat, set ourselves into survival mode, and I hope this works. Just right over here, you can't see it at all, but just under the water here is a Skulk Sensor that's going to activate any moment, and our boat is no more. And somehow, despite it being underwater, that trap has made quite the crater. So how we set this trap up is fairly simple, we'll just find a fairly shallow area, kind of like this. Next what we're going to do is just clear out some of the sand, put some pistons underneath, and then fill it back up again. Then we're just going to set up this little circuit underneath these pistons. This is where the skulk sensor goes, but don't connect it up to your redstone just yet, otherwise everything is going to break. You also want to clear out a 3x5 area underneath the pistons. Now, you don't have to put these sponges here, they are optional, they make the traps slightly more effective, but you don't really need them, because honestly, if you're going to go raid a monument just to build this trap, it's really not worth it. Next, what you want to do is just find the middle piston, and then cover it back up again, put a rail on top of it, uh, stack a bunch of minecarts with TNT, as many as you have, or as many as you want to put into the trap, I'm just going to put absolutely tons here, and then go ahead and break that, and just cover it up with sand, you might need a couple blocks right here, just try and make it look natural, and there you go. Oh, we have a bit sticking out on these sides, there we go, you would never notice that. The last part is connecting in the skulk sensor, which is definitely the most dangerous bit, because if you accidentally make a sound that the skulk sensor picks up, then your whole system is going to go off before you want it to. So what you want to do is put in the redstone that's going to connect it in, and then replace the block right here with the skulk sensor, and now it's armed. Now this next one isn't exactly a redstone weapon, but it is a pretty interesting game mechanic that I actually didn't know about before this, and you probably didn't know about either. So uh, most of you will know that if you light a piece of TNT underwater, uh, if it's not in air, then it's not going to do any damage to any blocks. However, if you get a activator rail and put some minecarts with TNT on it and go ahead and activate that, if they're next to blocks underwater, they're actually, it's actually going to blow it up. This effect actually becomes even more powerful if you have two sets of TNT minecarts and you activate one slightly before the other. So if we go ahead and very quickly, there we go. So when these go off, it's going to create a very powerful underwater explosion. I mean, look at that. Oh, look at that, I've just found an ocean monument while flying around here. Wow, I'm just flying around trying to find some islands for the next weapon, I keep finding these ocean monuments. This is the second one now. So this weapon has technically unlimited range, however, its range is limited by the size of your ocean, pretty much. Now, let me show you why. And here's the entire weapon right here, it's literally just a ton of TNT minecarts stacked together, I have like 50 right here. So let's go ahead and set those all off, and on their way they go. And these minecarts just make their way slowly and quietly along the C4. It's a completely silent and deadly weapon. Okay, maybe not that silent. Alright, we're coming up upon our target. Any moment now that all of the TNT minecarts are going to go up the bubble column and we will have impact. Here they come. Let's see if they're going to make it. No, they're not. Oh, but that actually 
that still destroyed it. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Oh, wow. Wow, I was not expecting that. casually came across another two ocean monuments right next to each other. Alright, so this final weapon, as you can probably tell, is the most complicated one here, although it is also arguably the most powerful one. So this is the improved TNT cannon, and it is extremely powerful. See that wall way over there? We're gonna destroy it. You just click this note block right here, it's gonna set these all off, and everything works. Oh, yep, there it goes, and the wall is gone. Another cool thing about this weapon is that it automatically resets itself, so we can just place a couple pieces of TNT in right here, go ahead and set them off, and they'll go up and go launching away, and then eventually it will reset itself, and we can just put another two pieces of TNT in. Now you saw me use TNT minecarts before, you don't actually have to use those, you can just use regular TNT as well, and it works just fine. Now when you use a lot of TNT minecarts, this cannon actually becomes very powerful. Basically, its power is dependent on how many TNT minecarts you want to waste every time you launch it. So if we have a ton, it'll launch the TNT at, like, extremely far away. So that last example was only 12 TNT minecarts, so we're going to double it to 25. And at this point, we're basically just going to be teleporting the TNT. I mean, look at that. Now this is a very interesting and powerful weapon, so if you guys do want to build this for yourself, let me know and I might consider making a tutorial for it. If you've made it to the end of the video, let me know in the comments which redstone weapon was your favorite. And also, I want to know, what do you guys want to see for an 100 sub special? The 50 sub one is kind of just a joke, but this is the first actually decent milestone. Let me know if you guys have any interesting ideas. But anyways, that's going to be the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and for now, goodbye. <laughs>